What's going on everybody? Future Oil Productions here and this is the very first review of this year. This is the Lionel Lion Chief Hogwarts Express with Bluetooth. Before we get started on this review I want to go over a little bit of the history of the real Hogwarts Express. The Hogwarts Express, otherwise known as GWR 4900 Class 5972 Olton Hall, was built in April of 1937 at the Swindon Railway Works for the Great Western Railway. It was first allocated to the to Carmathen, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, South Wales, where it remained until 1951. After being fitted with a three-row superheater at Swindon, it was allocated to Plymouth Lara TMD. Its last shed allocation was to Cardiff East Dock before it was withdrawn from service in, no in December of 1963. And it was acquired by Woodham Brothers Barry Val of Glamorgan for scrap in 1964. I probably butchered that. Woodham Brothers then sold 5972 to a private buyer and was stored at Procore UK LTD in Wakefield. And it left there as the 125th departure from Barry in May of 1981 after it was purchased for preservation. It was then based at the National Railway Museum Shildon in County Durham, and on the May 20th, 1998, it was returned to steam. Now this next section is a little bit uh, guesswork because I'm not sure exactly when they did the scouting locations, but here it goes. So my guess is between when they announced Chris Columbus as the director for Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, the film, not the book, and the actual filming date when they started filming in September, they went looking for, I guess, their Hogwarts Express. As they were looking for their Hogwarts Express, the Southern Railway West Country Class Locomotive 34027 Taw Valley was temporarily repainted and renamed as the Hogwarts Express. But film director Clarice Columbus said the engine looked too modern for the film, but the engine carried the name and the color for some months afterwards. In the Harry Potter films, the locomotive is depicted pulling the Hogwarts Express, a fictional train made up of four, later five, British Rail Mark I carriages. Scenes were filmed at King's Cross Railway Station, the Glenfin Viaduct, I think that's how you pronounce it, in Scotland and the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, along with internal scenes on board the train. When filmed, Olton Hall carried a Hogwarts Express headboard on the smoke box, featuring the Hogwarts School crest. The same emblem is featured as part of the Hogwarts Railway sigil on the tender and the carriages. It retains the, its GWR number of 5972 but with alternate nameplates fitted, naming the engine Hogwarts Castle. It is painted in a crimson livery, a non-standard color, as Great Western Railway locomotives were traditionally green. The renaming of the locomotive as Hogwarts Castle has become a railway preservation joke, the hall that thinks it's a castle. The Great Western Railway Castle class engines were a larger type of locomotive. Three full-size replicas of the locomotive as 5972 Hogwarts Castle are at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Universal Orlando Resort. Two are a, are a part of the Hogwarts Express train ride, and the other is a static exhibit in the Hogsmeade area. Multiple model train companies have made models of the Alton Hall. Trying Hornby did release a model of the Hall class in 1966. However, this model was last offered in 1983 as 4930 Hagley Hall. While Hornby, the successor to Trying Hornby, may still have the molds, they were modified some years ago to pr produce a Saint class replica. New tooling, however, has been made for a Hall class and is currently available in the Hornby range. Other manufacturers of the Hogwarts Express is Bachman USA and Marklin. Olden Hall 5972 was sometimes used for other work other than its Hogwarts duties. In May of 2009, it was moved temporarily to the Gloucestershire and 
Workshire Rider Railway, and in July 2009 it was based at the Tisley Locomotive Works for use on some of the regular Shakespeare Express trains run by Vintage Trains during the summer. Locomotive 5972 returned to G and WR during their annual Wizards Weekend event in 2010. Late 2011 saw the locomotive on static display in Hyde Park, still in its, still in its Hogwarts Red livery, and in June, July 2014, Locomotive 5972 worked two final Wizards Express Railway tours from Manchester to York before its expiry of its mainline certificate. As of 2015, the locomotive remains on static display at Warner Brothers Studio Tour London in the making of Harry Potter near Watford, and it will remain there in the museum for the foreseeable future. Now that you know the history of the real Hogwarts Express, let's talk about this model. The Lionel Lion Chief Hogwarts Express with Bluetooth includes a 460 locomotive, two passenger cars, one combination car, eight curved 036 fast track track sections, one 10 straight fast track plug expand play power lock on section, one terminal fast track section, and two 10 inch straights. 54 watt wall pack power supply and Lion Chief remote for the locomotive. The product specifications for this set are the gauge is O gauge, the scale type is traditional, the power is electric, the minimum curve needed to operate this set is 031, the dimensions total is 63 inches, and is most recently, recently featured in the 2017 ready to run catalog. Now that the specifications are out of the way, let's look at the detail on this model. On front of the engine we have some nice separately applied details here. We got two separately applied buffers, separately applied air hose, and a separately applied hook. And you also have two separately applied marker lights here. Above that we have a nice crisp 5972 and above that we have a nice crisp Hogwarts Express headboard. And above that we have the Hogwarts Castle Sigil. This is as far as I can zoom in to give you a better look at the uh, sigil, but trust me, it's very detailed. Something I didn't realize about British steam engines was that they always have these numbers with letters on the bottom of their smoke boxes. I have just found out that those, used, those are shed numbers. In 1950, the shed number 10A was for the Springs branch in Wigan. And that was until 1958, and then it became 8F. And then between 1963 and 1968, Carnforth was known as 10A. So this number belonged to the shed that the 5972 was stored in. So this very well could be the last number she had before she was retired. Moving down the side of the engine, we can see the wheel arrangement. It's a 460, meaning four lead wheels underneath the cylinders, six drive wheels coupled, and zero trailing wheels underneath the cab. Moving down the side of the engine, you can see the nice separately applied handrail running all the way back to the cab. Moving farther down the side of the engine, we can see a nice crisp Hogwarts castle, and it's the same on the other side. Moving back to the front and on top of the engine, we have the smokestack. And inside is the smoke unit. To load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you simply pour the smoke fluid down the stack. However, I recommend blowing gently into the hole to dislodge any smoke fluid bubbles that may appear. Moving back from the smoke stack, we have the steam dome, and inside are the pop-off valves. You can't really see them because they're painted black. And beyond that, we have the whistle which is uh, kind of wrapped in a sort of shroud, I guess you could say. Back down to the side of the engine, we have a nice crisp 5972 and the clear plastic insert for the fireman's side window. And some nice rivet detail as well. And then we have some nice cast in steps here. And then we have the drawbar for the locomotive that allows the electronics in the tender to communicate with the electronics in the locomotive. I've put the engine onto a siding so I could uh, show you the interior of the cab and I put the camera on the flat car so you get a better look. So here we have the back head. It's 
modestly detailed. There's some nice casting detail, like the throttle there, and then the firebox. And then here are the two switches for turning the smoke on and off and the sounds on and off. Now that we've reviewed the engine, let's review the tender. Here on the side of the tender, you can see a nice crisp Hogwarts Railway with the Hogwarts Castle logo and some nice rivet detail, along with some separately applied, separately applied handrails here on this side and here. And below that, you can see the wheel sets for the tender. There's three axles, six wheels total, three on each side. Moving to the front of the tender, we have a nice detailed front. We have separately applied brake handles here and here, some molded and coal here, some separately applied buffers here, and then here we have the draw bar that connects the electronics in the tender to the electronics in the engine. Moving to the top of the tender, we have a nice molded in coal load and the water hatches for taking on water. On the back of the tender, we have some nice molded in detail. We have some nice cast in steps. And then we have a little rod where you can hang marker lights, I guess in real life. Some two separately applied buffers, a separately applied European style coupling, and then the coupler which can be operated by pushing the tab on the side, like that. Here's a quick look at the left side of the engine and you can tell it's pretty much the same as the other side. Moving on to the next car in the set we have the passenger baggage combination coach. Here are the baggage doors. Here's some passenger doors here and there's another passenger door there and here's the Hogwarts Railways logo and these windows do light up when the track power is on. Here are the next two carriages and these are both passenger carriages and they're pretty much the same design minus having different road numbers. Before we start the Hogwarts Express up I want to go over BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Now this engine has a load of features, the sounds are amazing, sounds accurate to the movie, but my favorite feature is the user activated announcements. It's actually the uh, actors Robbie Coltrane, Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, Emma Watson, and they're saying their lines from the movie. But what's really special about it, it's the voice clips from the first movie. So it's kind of charming to hear, you know, 11 year old Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and, you know, Emma Watson. And it even has the uh, trolley lady that, you know, gives the candy out to the kids on the train. Well, that's it. Let's get her started up. Here we go. Fire up. Now you may notice the headlight for the engine is on, but there are no sounds coming from it. Well, that is for this reason. Originally when they made the Lion Chief engines, they would start up into steaming sounds. But the newer ones, I believe, I think just the Bluetooth ones, I'm not sure about the newer ones, they actually do this kind of sound now. So to rectify that, if you've seen my Lion Chief Plus review on 4501, you simply turn the switch for the Lion Chief remote on. And there we go. Okay, let's try the whistle. Pretty accurate. Now, there is a bell sound on here. I'm not sure if the GWR uh, Hall classes actually had a bell or not. I'm pretty sure they didn't. But if you don't want a bell sound, just don't hit the bell button. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to play it so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Okay, so here's some of the user announcements. This is Hackred. Pretty cool, right? And then, ready? Here's young Daniel Radcliffe. But Hagrid, there must be a mistake. This is cut on line and three quarters. There's no such thing. Is that? And then it just repeats. Alright, let's go on ahead and move her out.
that's it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. This train is a bunch of fun to run. And the details are amazing. The sounds are amazing. I just love it. I just only wish I could have shown you the Bluetooth features because those are also amazing as well. The app has been giving me nothing but fits ever since it was updated last night. It was supposed to make it better. I think it just made things worse. Anyways, if you're interested in picking one of these up, the retail price is $419.99. But if you go to, through a Lionel dealer, you could get a little bit of a discount. And for those who are British and are watching this right now, I am very, very sorry. I don't know any British whistle signals, so I just used what I know, which is American signals. So I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I just don't know any of the British, you know, whistle signals for the GWR Railway. Anyways, that's it for now. I'm Future Rail Productions, and I'll see you all next time.